there's no way the earth is fucking flat, you know, and uh, I think a couple days ago, somebody was trying to say that because a level can't measure, you know, the levelness of a sphere, that the world is flat. That's like just dumb as shit. So, so are you, um, can I ask you a question? Sure. Ask away. I'm looking for a conversation. Awesome. Awesome. So am I. Uh, so uh, I'm going to take everything at good faith value from here on now. Um, i sharing what you have heard that has been the strongest thing that you would say, okay, I know that the earth isn't flat, but that's a good argument. Is there anything, or that's a good, you know, um, uh, evidentiary, you know, consideration like somebody's giving you something that made you think about it anything like that i mean a lot of the uh flat earth arguments that i've heard came from uh dan the waterman so i don't know about that okay so well l let's have a conversation with me then but outside of dan the waterman i'm sure you've maybe come across you know some other ideas about flat earth so i mean is there is there nothing that makes sense like you've heard at least i would say that probably everything that dan suggested to you i would feel comfortable with i would agree i like dan i think dan's very intelligent yeah, definitely i do um, think dan's I've, intelligent I've met, as well i like dan as well sorry i was just uh, making sure that was yeah. clear oh no that's okay that's okay i'm just trying to be clear as well but um yeah what would you what would you like to see from our side what would you consider something that would be something you like? Come on, guys, do this. A model. Okay. And and again, this is good faith. So let's just unpack this. What what in your opinion is a model useful for? A model is useful for like representing the concept that somebody's trying to get across. Okay. So the only thing that I can see right now are in front of me in a 360 degree, you know, area are treetops, you know, as far away as those trees are, you know, or as high as they are, you know, they could be real close to me. They could be a hundred yards away and be really tall so that my, my horizon is very short. Um, but if I were to build a model of that landscape that I see, that would be the extent of my model. And that model right now would include the sun in the sky, as well as Luna in her quarter, I'm sorry, in her waning crescent stage. So that's as far as my model would, you know, I would put a little stick figure of me on the piece of paper, and then I'd draw like this circle of vision with the horizon in the distance and then i would draw a circle for the sun with you know yellow and then i would draw a circle or i would draw a half moon with silver and the blue sky that would be my model then i would go look sun moon and then earth that's my model all right i mean halfway decent i mean you at least have the sun and the moon involved so that's that's a lot better than a lot of other people have said well, you know, I think it's just an open conversation. I'm just trying to be creative in how I communicate the way I see things. But, you know, I think it, I think it can be a peaceful, amicable conversation in good faith. You know, there's no yeah, reason why I should ever get frustrated. You know what I mean? I mean, you're going to be you're going to be frustrated in general just talking to me, you know, uh, but I, I get that, you know, well, let me let me interrupt you just real quick. Why yeah, why ahead. would you why would you curse me and say you would have a negative reaction? Like, no, I won't. How about that? I counter your spell. Oh man, counterspelled. Damn. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to create a conversation with you where you get frustrated with me. I don't want to do that. No, no, definitely you know? that's that's not going to happen from my side. You know, uh, you might get frustrated because I'm going to, uh, well, first off, I've been drinking all night, you know, so I'm a little bit in a position where I'm just going to try to have fun. You know, and if okay. uh, you are in a position where you want to have a significantly serious debate, you know, I'll get to that point, but I'm going to have a little bit of fun with it, so... Okay, well, as long as we can have fun, yeah, I don't mind having a sparring match. Let's let's step in the ring and uh, go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. 
I have a claim that I stand by. I don't make any appeals to space. I don't make any appeals to NASA. You know, uh, I've done six years of observations for myself with the mighty P uh, 900 and the P 1000. And I happen to have been persuaded by nature herself that she demonstrates that the extension of distance in my field of vision is um, 100% every single time the result of refraction with or without mirage. So no matter how far away I'm looking into the distance, whatever I'm seeing is always 100% the result of the conditions of the medium through which I'm looking. And that can either present the horizon close to me, farther away, raised up, raised down, magnified, diminished, depending on the time of day. To me, I've never, ever, 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 ever thought that the Earth looked curved when I was looking looking through it and trying to study this stuff. Yeah, that's a, that's a great position to be at. Uh, where have you been, though? Um, in your mind, why does that matter? Well, if you've traveled outside the U.S., that means that you have more of a uh, universal position to actually say things from. If you've stayed in the U.S., that means that your position from your you know, actual things that you're going to say from your own observations are a little bit limited. Well, my understanding of science is that I can simply take the aspect ratio and carry it with me whenever I go to South Africa. So that what I've seen here on the East Coast, where I am, I'm in Maryland, and I've done six years of observations on the Chesapeake Bay from one mile to 12 miles in that uh, circumference I guess that, what would that be? That radius, that radius of, of my position. And then on the West Coast, uh, Ventura County, I've filmed the archipelago known as the Channel Islands. And that's been six years of research. So I've had two different uh, climates, two different locations that I've seen uh, e exactly the same effects just on different days and in different reason for different re meteorological reasons. So then all of all that does for me is, is say to me, in these two places where I've done extensive research on my own, I can then expect to see similar things, although the climates are going to be different and the clarity might be different. I'm going to see exactly the same thing no matter where I go. Well, you know what? I respect the fact that you're actually giving a different observation instead of the assault and sea. I do actually consider that. And uh, actually, you know, I also live on the Chesapeake Bay, you know, and here in Virginia, you know, okay. so that's kind of like a common observation we're going to have. Yeah. Do you know how far away your shoreline is on the opposite side? Just curious. Shoreline for, uh, for, or do we talk an opposite side? Because I have a couple well, of sides. It, Oh, oh, okay. So, like, if you, if you, let's say, for instance, your backyard ends at the Chesapeake Bay. When you go down and you dip your toes in, or you stand on your your boat dock, and you look across the water, how far away is the nearest land that you see? Well, the nearest land that I see, if I go down to the uh, the park that's very close to my house, which is on the shore, the closest dock that I would see would be about three miles away. Okay. That's absolutely perfect for, you know, observations of obstruction that are going to be um, demonstrable for you. And, uh, I, you know, uh, if you have a camera, then my encouragement, if you want to do this for yourself, is to, um, you know, get a tripod that's going to be, let's say, however far. It's going to be the same, you know, elevation all the time. It's, let's say it's 50 inches. And then, you know, so then you're 50 inches off the ground. You take a snapshot of any target in the distance that you think is worth you know framing take that snapshot do it again every 10 minutes and you'll see that the position of that landscape is going to change uh incrementally uh over that time and the only thing that is going to cause that change is refraction and you'll find that that um sometimes that shoreline doggone it looks like it's closer to me like that's weird why would it do that why would it look bigger and closer 
those are the kinds of things that I had to wrestle with in a first person experience because I wasn't using mainstream science to um, shape the way I think. I was just simply letting uh, Mother Nature lift up her skirts and show me her glory. That is, that sounds actually pretty wonderful. Um, but when you're talking about mainstream science, are you talking about the uh, concept of physics as well? Well, uh, I don't know necessarily know how to answer the, main, the physics. I, I see those as the same question, physics and mainstream science. So are you familiar with uh, who Andrew Thomas Young is? No idea who that is. Okay. He is the, you know, go-to guy, at least he was six years ago with the rumpus, you know, the rumpus would always appeal to the great and the mighty Andrew Thomas Young, who has a prolific amount of research. I'm not knocking that at all. This man has done an amazing amount of research in the original languages of French, German, Spanish, and Portuguese, probably. But, um... Oh my! Yes, I've I've considered I've considered the science that uh, is representative by Andrew Thomas Young. I have found it wanting in uh, about one hundred percent of its claims. I, I disagree with absolutely everything that the man uh, has per, put uh, out as uh, viable science for the physics of air. Well, all right. This sounds like it's going to be a pretty exciting discussion. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, you know, I have plenty of uh, video tutorials that I've I've made in the past that I have found interesting. I've always tried to nip and tuck here and there. Or I've tried to embellish here or there because you know everybody has uh, other questions that I didn't think of, you know, putting in the first video. So then I got to make another video, and then that leads to another question. So I've made a lot of different tutorials that hopefully, at, you know, if you take into consideration five of them. You know, and some of them are 10 minutes, some of them are more than that. But, you know, after five tutorials, I think you should have a pretty good grasp of the science that I'm trying to uh, re, uh, recalibrate or remedy, so to speak. So I got to ask, were you here for the, uh, the level of discussion about, you know, maybe three days ago? Uh, no, I've been off, uh, off the grid. I was uh, with family for the weekend. Oh, man, you know, I, I understand that. So, uh, are you under, do you understand the uh, argument that uh, a lot of flat earthers go with where uh, that you can't land a plane on a sphere? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with uh, that uh, trajectory of argumentation, sure. What about the argumentation that you can't have something level if you're on a sphere? Uh, I do. Again, I'm going to affirm the philosophical, you know, uh, idea that you're putting out because it's just conceptual. My question at this point is, can you show me a textbook of spherical geometry where it ever refers to the point at the radius and the circumference as being referred to as level. The point and circumference being level, like on a uh, circle when you or take the... necessarily a sphere? No, no, I'm sorry. So this is going to be my my, cult my uh, communication problem. So we have a circle and we have the radius. When you... When you when you uh, penetrate the, rate, the the circumference, that's a point of the radial. Do you understand? Is, is somebody help me out with what I'm trying to say? If I draw, if I draw a diameter from the center to the to the edge, that point right there, where the diameter touches the circumference, is a point. Is it, yes, am, I, am I on track so far? Okay, you are definitely okay. on track. Okay, and, great. Uh, just so, just for clarification, you're talking about the radius from the center to something. Uh, I, I definitely get that. I was just for the live stream. I was trying to make sure it was okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I appreciate that. So then, my my request is for anyone to produce a spherical geometry textbook that refers to that point as level. I don't so, want the explanation. I I don't. Hold, hold on. I'm sorry. 
I don't want you to explain to me the idea. I get the idea. At this point, if you can't produce a citation where a spherical geometrical textbook refers to that point as level, then we have nothing further to discuss, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. So when you're talking about level in a sphere, you can't look at the specific lines of the sphere. You got to look at the tangent line. Sorry. Uh, so you got to look at the tangent line. What the tangent line is, that is a line that is just barely touching. That is the line that is only there specifically touching that one point. And when it comes to being level on a sphere or on a circle or anything else like that, what you're looking at is you're looking for something to be level, straight, referencing the actual center point. Yes, thank you for that explanation. Do you have a citation, please? For simple geometry? Okay, I, I'm not sure. Maybe there's miscommunication happening right now. I understand the explanation that you just gave me. It's perfectly clear. I understand exactly everything that you just said. But you are the one who said it, so it's hearsay. I'm wondering where you got that information, and can you provide a citation for it? I'm not trying to make things complicated. I just want to see what your source is. I mean... I don't readily have a source available for this ex that's fair instance enough. and everything. Sure. You know, that's fair enough. But no, I concept, get that. Absolutely. The concept of, uh, and I, I said simple geometry, and I was uh, mistaken there. What I meant to say was trigonometry, where essentially when you have a sphere, which is supposed to be what the globe is supposed to be, you're supposed to have, you know, 360 degrees around that sphere. And part of the reason that they actually chose 360 degrees was because it was close enough to the actual Earth's circumference of the days and everything else that they have around, like, revolving around the, the sun. And so 365 is not an easy number to actually divide into uh, little quadrants and everything else. But 360 is a great number that you can divide anything into. Here, here. Amen. I agree. So when people start talking about, you know, level on a sphere, they're not specifically saying that something is level. What they're saying is that the tangent line going across that sphere is, is actually level. Here, here, amen. I agree 100% and I'm not being facetious. I, I agree with what you're saying. No, no uh, pushback for me. In let me let me give you a little bit of background about myself is that I technically am a glober, but really what I am is somebody who actually believes in uh, finding the truth and everything. So when it comes to uh, flat earth stuff, I'm partially on your side, but at the same time, I'm going to give you the devil's advocate. Yeah, I would expect nothing less, you know, and I have a good friend. We were talking about spirituality the other day, and he said, do you want me to, he's like, I don't understand what you want me to say. Do you want me to say what, what you believe? And I'm like, no, I want you to be you. Like, I want you to tell me what you think about existence. And he's like, well, I don't know. I'm like, well, where would you start? Like, how would you take, how would you take the first step to like, find out like, who am I? You know, why am I here? So I thoroughly appreciate the vantage point that you're coming from as a truth seeker. So I have no impatience with you. None. Zero. I have no expectations for you. Zero. You're not going to disappoint me. The only thing that you're going to do is impress me. The only thing that you're going to do is impress me when you say something original and I learn something from you and I steal it and then I present it as my own when I tell someone else about what you just told me. <laughs> because that's what we all do. Yeah, man. And that that is really the only thing that I really care about is that people are learning about something. You know, if it comes to uh, if if you are able to convince me that the earth is flat, I'm not going to get upset. I'm going to be like, oh, damn, the earth is flat. Oh, shit. May I, may I interject real quick? Go ahead. 
what have you done personally in primary fashion? What have you done to fundamentally prove that your model that you believe is the globe is authentic? Nothing. So you've never tried to prove your own model. I've never tried to prove my own model. Uh, that's that's a fair concession. I appreciate that. No further questions. So my uh, my position still stands that uh, I know that the Earth is not a a perfect sphere, and I know that the uh, the Earth is a spherical, you know. But I understand. Oh, that was a crow. Uh, sorry. So about that. may I interject? Go ahead. If you haven't proven something for yourself, how do you know anything? I'm just saying anything. It doesn't, we can veer off into spirituality now, as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't have to be about the globe, because I'm not here to be a flat earther. I'm here to be an intelligent creator of spiritual development. So a lot of the so, stuff that I can provide to you, you know, that I can actually provide from a first-hand experience was travels around the world on a C-130. What is a C-130? Can you help me understand that uh, reference? A C-130 is one of the, uh, one of the planes that we use for uh, military transport. Are you still active? No, I'm not. Okay, that's fine. I was just curious. I was going to say thanks for being a part of the conversation if you're still active. Thanks for being a part of the conversation anyway, but if you were still active, kudos to you even more. So how 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 high? What altitude did you fly? We were about a, I think it was a forty thousand feet, I think. And what were you a like, passenger uh, or were you a pilot? Oh, I was passenger. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. The, uh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. I, I'm jealous that you got that to see was, the world from that vantage point. I was actually flying to Turkey when uh, when I'm taking this current observation I'm talking about. Um, where I was actually carrying military cargo to uh, Turkey after the uh, coup that just happened. And what we did is that we actually built a, a couple of uh, bases. Sorry, sorry. We built a couple of structures for the AC-130s, which the AC-130s are basically a C-130 with a cannon, like a tank cannon, like a... What the fuck is it called? Uh, the... What the fuck is the tank the U.S. has? The the Abrams. The Abrams tank uh, cannon was on the ship, or was on the uh, the plane and everything. And we flew around the world. We flew from New Mexico to uh, Newfoundland to Turkey. And the entire time, we were chasing the sun. Like, literally, we were in the uh, sun's twilight hour and everything else the entire time that we're flying so the pilots oh wow can i stop you real quick yeah go ahead that is amazing because that's one of the things that i've always wanted to see happen like in my mind if i were a scientist and i had a budget that allowed me to have a c-130 where i could chase the sun you better goddamn believe I would be chasing that sun to measure how fast I would have to travel to stay in the daylight the entire time. That would be, I would, oh, that would be amazing. So you're telling me that you were in the pocket. How long were you in the air during that time? 13 hours? Oh, from, uh, so from Newfoundland to Turkey, it was about 13 hours. Okay, that's really interesting. Somebody should be geeking out on this math right now. Like somebody should be like completely salivating. I'm kind of salivating. I'm just not intelligent enough to to be able to formulate this stuff, but I find this very very fascinating. So you spent 13 year uh 13 hours in the air in the pocket of twilight. Did did is that what I'm understanding? Uh it was probably about uh 8 hours in twilight and about a uh... Okay, I, I, so, I, I've so, been drinking all night, so whatever the fuck the rest of the math is, you know, for five, the other part. it would be five. Yeah. And that was yeah, yeah, uh, but, okay. the uh, Oh, okay, so then you slowed down, so then you lost the sun, you fell back. 
No, you see what uh, I'm saying? The the sun was moving a lot faster than the plane could catch up with. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So for eight hours, for eight hours, you were the tortoise keeping up with the hare. Chugga, 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 chugga. Yes, and then sir. you petered out. Right. And then you petered out at five hours and fell back and it became dark. Yeah. 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 That's exactly the way light works. Right. If you were if you were running behind your dad as a child and he had a flash, you know, he had a uh, a, uh, a reflective uh, vest on and then you had a light on your forehead that would you could always see your dad ahead of you. But but he got too far ahead and you could no longer see the reflection of that vest, but he's still straight ahead of you. That's the way light works, my brother. My brother, that's the way light works. 100%, man. Yep. See we're see how much agreement we have so far? We've got no conflict. So, when it comes to, uh, you know, the concept of something being level... You know, uh, the, well, there's there's like uh, 15 different things I could talk about right now. You know, one of them is the fact that, you know, people like to say uh, on the flat earth side that, uh, you know, if a plane is flying, that they got to like readjust for everything and everything else.